Good morning, Year 3. Today we're looking at how we can recognise and count in tenths. So we'll begin by checking out that in focus question. And again, this is where you'll pause the video and have a go yourself. Then we'll look at what a tenth is. We'll have a go at counting forward and backwards in tenths. And then it's your turn. In focus question. <clears throat> so it says, how much of the chocolate bar does each child get? So we've got four characters here. We've got Elliot, Sam, Hannah and Holly. And as you can tell, they're holding different amounts of the chocolate bar. So Elliot has got one piece, Sam's got two pieces, Hannah's got three pieces and Holly's got four pieces. But if we was to say how much of the chocolate bar does each child get in a fraction, okay, that's different to how many pieces. So we wouldn't just say that Elliot has one piece, Sam has two pieces of chocolate. So have a little think, where would you start with this question? And it's fine if you don't know, because we're going to go through it together. But have a little think, if you was to write it as a fraction, how much of the chocolate bar does each child get? Okay, so if we look at the chocolate bar, how many pieces are there all together? And this is the way we start each time. So before we can look at how many pieces or what fraction Elliot got or Sam got, you've got to begin at the beginning with how many pieces there were all together. So let's count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten equal pieces or ten equal parts. Okay, so this is where it comes into play about talking about tenths. So one of those circles would be one tenth, and we'll go into this in a second. So when we're looking at the overall fraction, there are 10 pieces or 10 equal parts. So if we begin counting, it says the chocolate bar is cut into 10 pieces. And one of the pieces, so if we just took one of them, this is what we describe as one tenth of the bar. So there are 10 all together, but if we just took one of them, we'd say it's one tenth. And as you can see, Elliot, that by Elliot, that's how we'd write that fraction, one, which is red, and then the 10 underneath. Now we'll come into what those, those mean in a moment, but the, the number on the bottom is called the denominator and the number on the top is called the numerator. And the denominator tells us how many parts there are all together and that's the 10. And then the numerator tells us how many parts we've got shaded in or have eaten or are being used. So that's, that's one, okay? And we carry on. So two parts of the chocolate bar would become two tenths. And that's how you'd write it, like Sam shows. Two and then a line and then ten underneath. Because the parts don't alter. There's always going to be ten. Ten equal pieces or ten parts of the chocolate bar. And then there's three tenths, four tenths. And finally, there is ten tenths. Now this is important because when we get back to ten tenths we can write this in different ways. So we can put ten slash or line ten. Okay so you've got your numerator and denominator but that's the same as ten tenths written or one whole because the chocolate bar is whole again. We've got the whole 10 parts back together. So as you can see at the bottom, there's sort of like a number line going up. So we've got 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths. And instead of there being 10 tenths, it says 1 because that symbolises 10 tenths. It's the same as one whole. The bar, the chocolate bar is whole again. So this is where we're going to look at what those numbers mean. So the top number is that numerator, 
and the bottom is the denominator. And your denominator is the number of parts all together, so what you begin with. So in this question, we had 10 whole, the, the chocolate bar was split into 10 whole parts, okay? And the numerator is how many we're dealing with, so how many. So if we thought about Elliot, he had one part of that chocolate bar, so he had one tenth. So 10 tenths is the same as one whole, and it's the same as saying it, it in words, 10 tenths, okay? So there's different ways we can write a fraction. So you can write it in numbers, or you could write it as the word, so 10 tenths. And when it's whole, that means all the parts are there, so it's one whole. And if we go back to the in focus question, we've got Elliot, Sam, Hannah and Holly. Okay, so remember there's 10 equal parts all together. So if we think and look about how many of those parts Elliot has, he has one out of the 10. So his fraction that he has is one tenth. So Sam has two, so he will have two tenths. Hannah has three, so she'll have three tenths. And Holly has four, so she's going to have four tenths. Okay, and if you actually add all those together, the top numbers, the numerator, you'll find that they all equal 10 and that makes the whole chocolate bar again. So if it weren't split into those parts for the children, you'd still have 10. Because if you add one, add two makes three, add the three makes six, add the four makes 10 again. Okay. And then finally, if we count forward in our tens, so... We start at zero and then we've got one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. Hopefully you'll know what comes next. It'd be four tenths. And then we go to five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths. And then the final one would be ten tenths, but you could also write it as one whole. So each time that numerator is increasing and it's the same as one whole at the end when you get to the 10 tenths. If you was to count backwards in your tenths, okay, where the numerator decreases, and if you notice at every point, the, the denominator is remaining the same, it's staying at 10, because the total amount of pieces does not alter. It doesn't become more or less. It's just the numerator that alters. So we begin with 10 tenths, 9 tenths, 8 tenths, and then we get to 7 tenths, 6 tenths, 5 tenths, 4 tenths, 3 tenths, 2 tenths, 1 tenth, and then 0. And again, that numerator is decreasing. And now it's your turn. So... If you go onto Google Classroom and you have a little look at the things that are on there, do all your answers in your red book so you've got plenty of um, space to sketch anything out, draw anything, make mistakes. And that's a good part of maths. You can always make mistakes because that's how we learn. So one of the questions you might get is to fill in the missing values. Now this is where, this is where your number bonds come into play. OK, it might look quite frightening to begin with, but actually you will ace this. It's really, really simple. So the 10 tenths at the top is your whole. And then it's saying how to make that 10 tenths. So if you had six tenths, what might you add to your six tenths to make 10 tenths? OK, and then when you go back further down, I'm not going to give the answer, but one tenth add something makes your answer okay have a little go at that and then you'll have things about the odd one out so um, look at the different diagrams so you've got four different ones there and which is the odd one out and why so if you can explain or perhaps write down next to each one what the fraction would be and then figure out which is the odd one out and why good luck have a go well done